How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar, and today I want to do a bit of a head-to-head -head matchup between the Harbor Freight Thunderbolt 100-watt panel and Rich Solar 100-watt panel. Now, these are two very popular brands, and when you're just getting into solar, you're kind of like, eh, does it doesn't really matter. Doesn't it just come all down to price? They're both 100 watts. Aren't they going to put out the same power, be roughly the same quality? Well, not so fast. There can be massive differences, and just between these two panels, I'm seeing double-digit differences in terms of the power Power they're putting out. So this is information you want to take into account to make sure you're making the right decision for your own project. So let's go ahead and give you all the basic parameters of each one of these panels. And then ultimately, let's do a power test and see how much energy we can actually harvest from the sun for each of these panels and how much difference there is testing apples to apples, same angle, right beside each other on the same day. So for the testing today, we got the Harbor Freight here on this side, it's connected up to an EcoFlow Delta II that's landing the power and it will accumulate the energy. And then specifically, we'll be measuring with these power meters. That will be the accumulated energy. And you can see the lower right-hand corner, this 100 watt panel is already at 102 or 103, which is awesome results. So that's how we're measuring it. And on this side, for the rich solar, I have a Delta III Plus in the same type of power meter. Now I'm gonna measure for multiple hours in the morning and then switch the hardware, switch the portable power stations, the wiring, the power meters to the other side and measure in the afternoon, trying to cancel out any of the air. And then for the tilt angle, I have it angled about 36 to 37 degrees. We're facing due south, so that's your preference. We have clear skies, a really good day for this test in terms of getting the maximum power out. Now, if you wanna know the exact angle for your area, because it could be a little different, you can check out the link in the description to our website. You can type in your exact address, or you could type in like Chicago, Illinois, which is close to where I'm at. And you can see for each of the seasons over or an overall angle that you should be setting. If you're fixing an angle, you can just take the overall. Here, I'm getting close to that fall setting. 32 degrees is good for us, but the standard kickstands on the Harbor Freight put it at that 36, and then I just put this hodgepodge setup on the Rich Solar to match the exact angle. And then just remember on your iPhone or Android, usually the measurement app would have a bubble level, and then that bubble level is actually gonna give you an angle that you can just set against your panel. And then that's gonna be an easy indication of, okay, I have it right set to the 37, so my rich solar is matching my Harbor Freight, or I'm trying to match my 32 for Chicago, Illinois in the fall. This is just an easy way to measure the exact angle that you have your panel set to. So just finish up the morning session and the conditions are pretty much perfect. It is bright and sunny, no clouds in the sky, and about 60 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit during the testing. So these results are gonna be about as good as it gets for the Rich Solar and Harbor Freight. But first, let's look at just some of the basic dimensions, weights, and some of the designs of these two panels. So for the Rich Solar, we have 21 and a quarter inches across by 39 inches. And then for the Harbor Freight, it's 26 and three quarters of an inch by 36 and a half. In terms of area, the Harbor Freight is 976 square inches and the Rich Solar is 829. So right away for me, in terms of the area, man, the Harbor Freight has a ton more area. So I would think that translates into more power, but we'll see if that carries through with the results. Weight-wise, Harbor Freight's a little bit heavier at 14.4 pounds compared to Rich Solar at 12.4. So we'll go ahead and flip things around. And I have actually taken the cover here off so we can see the diodes and some of the wiring. Now from a rail perspective, these are both anodized aluminum and very stout and strong. The difference, Harbor Freight does have plastic corner covers. I think this would be a little bit more durability for its setting on the ground opposed to being permanently mounted, which is probably favoring what this design is for on the Rich Solar. Also, you have those legs built in on the Harbor Freight that gives it roughly that 36 to 37 degree angle full, but you can adjust them slightly. And then the Harbor Freight comes with an SAE wired end. So that is a big difference. Pretty much all of their 100 watt panels are gonna come with your standard MC4. So depending on your application, you're most likely going to have to do some rewiring and cut these off, crimping on MC4 connectors, which I do have a video on and I'll point you there in a second 
or you can get a adapter that goes SAE to MC4. So you can keep this on just in case you want in the future and then adapt that to MC4. I'll put that in the description for your reference. Now Rich Solar will come with the complete specifications on a sticker on the back as we would expect with most panels. Open circuit voltage at 22.8 volts, short circuit current at 5.78 amps, critical parameters for you in your design of your system, especially if you're wiring many panels together. And then for your maximum power point, we should be seeing similar to this today, would be 18.6 volts and 5.38 amps. And then for Harbor Freight, you're like, why is it written on here? Uh, well, there is no specs sticker or plate. That is one of the criticisms I have for this Thunderbolt from Harbor Freight. So it will give you rated output and that just comes from your manual here. So we can see 18 volts and 5.56 amps is rated output. That would be the closest comparison to our plate that we just looked at for Rich Solar would be the maximum power point. So this is not your open circuit voltage and your short circuit current. So you would have to design with a higher voltage and a higher current when you're putting together your panels. So we'll look under the hood here for the Rich Solar, just popping this off. Should be noted, both of these are IP67 rated. Looking at the bus bars coming in, we do have solder joints, but on the bottom, we only have crimps. So that'd be a little bit of a pushback. I would prefer to see soldered here, but as long as the manufacturing process is good and that's crimping tight, you should be okay. And this is for our Harbor Freight, a little bit cleaner install, soldered up top. I should have mentioned those are your diodes there but then we have soldered at the bottom compared to the crimped on the Rich Solar. So I will give the Thunderbolt here from Harbor Freight a little bit of an advantage with all soldered connections here. All right, so it's about 1.45 in the afternoon and I did switch things around. So Harbor Freight has the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus now. And we're still right at about 100 watts there running high 16 volts, low 17 volts, and right around that 5.9 to 6 amps on the Harbor Freight. Then if we look at the Rich Solar, so Rich Solar's coming in right around 85 watts, similar voltage, so we're 16.9 to 17 volts, but only bringing in right at about 5 amps for the current. So quite a bit of difference between the two. We're about an hour into the afternoon session. I'll go for another hour or so, roll up the results, and we'll see if that difference plays out in the amount of energy I was able to accumulate on each of these sides, even with the switch over. Remember, we switched over halfway through to make sure if we had air between the two that we would cancel that out. So I love 100 watt panels. I think they're super versatile. I've even seen people stack up 30, 40, or 50 of them to completely power their home off grid. Now for most of us, that's probably not gonna be the way to offset our utility needs in our home. Now, if you are interested to get solar on your home, you can start off where I did for my home setup, and you'll see a link in the description where you can just enter in a little bit of information on your home and your setup and your utility bill. Then within a few minutes, you get the size. Mine was about 11 kilowatts and a rough estimate on the cost and then you can use that information for your planning going forward to see if solar is right for you in the near future. Remember, make sure you check incentives and make sure they're not expiring so you don't miss out on renewable energy credits, net metering, or any other incentive that help make solar practical for a home. Now, if you want to bring the price down and take on a lot more of the install, you can also do the DIY route, which is a different link in the description. And that's where I started with Project Solar on a 4.8 kilowatt system, a smaller system I put on one of my rental properties. Project Solar helped me with the design, the permitting, they delivered all the materials, then I did all the labor and requested inspection and then we got our permission to operate. So both of those options are out there and you can get a pretty good idea on what it would take for your own home in a matter of minutes. So testing is completed. I went a little bit longer on the afternoon session for a cumulated amount of time of five hours and 15 minutes. So a good amount of time splitting between morning and afternoon. And remember we flip flop those portable power stations, meters, wiring, just to make sure it's even with any air. Now for the rich solar in watt hours, remember we're accumulating up and getting energy that we got across morning session and afternoon session. So for rich solar, we're 232 watt hours collected in the three hours. And then for the Harbor Freight, we're 274. So that's a pretty massive difference. I was not expecting that. I knew the Harbor Freight would do good, but I wasn't expecting exactly that. Afternoon session, little shorter and then we got 191 watt hours 
and we'll see then if that plays out. And we got 221 on the Harbor Freight. Adding those up, that gives us 432 total watt hours for the Rich Solar and 495 total watt hours for the Harbor Freight. Taking these, taking the difference, and then putting that over 432, that is a 17% difference in increase Harbor Freight compared to Rich Solar. That's insane. That is a big, big difference on quote unquote 100 watt panels, right? If you just looked at the panels, you're thinking you're getting the same output. No, 17% difference that is crazy and i'm going to continue to do more 100 watt panel testing and try to do apples and apples so i'll take the harbor freight as our winner and then now i'll put that against renergy and then i'll put it versus eco worthy and then i'll put it versus any other panels that you guys let me know so let me know any of your critiques down in the comments all comments are welcome what do you want me to include or exclude on the next testing and my plan right now is to take Harbor Freight versus the next 100 watt competitor and then start to aggregate all those together so we can look side by side what's the best 100 watt panel so you guys can make a smart decision for your own projects around the house. So links in the description for the panels used for the little adapter we talked about, SAE to the MC4, portable power stations, any other reference you need for the video. Now, if you need a little bit more help, the top video over here is gonna show you how to crimp on those MC4 connectors on the Harbor Freight panel. If you need a little wiring help, series, parallel, series, parallel, what's the difference and when would you use it, check out this video right here. And then the video right here will be the DIY solar install I did over on my rental property. I saved a ton of money and it was a really fun project. So thanks for joining me on this video and then we'll catch you on one of those next videos. Take care.